Welcome ladies and gentlemen to the status report highlight for the 13th of February, 2018. Mm-mm. Two weeks have passed already? My my. I'd just like to announce before we get started that I did a Daisy Spotlight interview with Boydy over on his channel. It's about two hours long, worth a watch though, get some good discussions between us about Daisy and uh, 6-3. I'll leave a link in the description below if you want to check it out. It's a long one, so probably like fall asleep watching it or something, I don't know, but check it out. And this week we're going to kick things off with my man Brandon PR manager, Martin. Hello everyone, as Eugene is travelling this week, it's my turn to contribute to the status report after quite some time and provide some summary of the past two weeks in the DAISY dev team. With February in full swing, we're approaching the moment where with each week, the 0.63 experimental release is becoming more and more likely. We're about to start team-wide playtests to get our internal servers as full as possible in order to get proper data on server synchronization and performance. With that said, there are still elementary parts, like swimming and vaulting, of the game that are very much work in progress, and for that reason, we are still not feeling very comfortable talking about any potential 0.63 experimental release dates publicly. Oh come on now, give old Sippy Flaps a little whisper in the ear of their release date. I promise I won't tell anybody. Considering some feedback we got under the last status report on Twitter, we've been looking at ways how to still communicate the state of things more clearly. Potentially as a progressively updated online task list, together with Eugen and Beatty, we've compiled a to-do list of sorts, basically our experimental goals from the beta status report where we want to provide a simple overview of current state of each key part of 0.63 update. We'll check if and how we can publish it. We still need to work out some specifics with our team leads, also during the playtests I mentioned. But suffice to say, there is a lot of work in progress, and less things we would already be able to take off as ready for experimental. While we don't want to give in to any unnecessary rush, there is also the other side of things that kind of makes us want to progress towards the 0.63 experimental PC release as fast as possible. Our release schedule for this year is pretty tight. The main goal is to have the PC beta and 1.0 all happen in 2018, and we're also getting much closer to bringing DayZ to console players. Our good relationship with both Sony and Microsoft opens interesting opportunities for cooperation, and since we've always had our focus aimed at the existing PC community of players first and foremost, it's in our interest to bring you solid PC releases ASAP, so that we can also satisfy the large audience waiting for DayZ on consoles. Despite the not-so-huge amount of work going into our console builds of the game, we're basically able to run our regular PC 0.63 builds on both consoles with no major issues in gameplay or performance. Wait, wait, that's, that's pretty interesting and important. And so the progress towards PC release of 0.63 experimental and stable is critical also from this point of view. Not only we really want to have something to play already, we also want to grow our community further. So we've got a little over 10 months left of 2018, Bit of a tight squeeze, especially in game development years. That's um, 10 months to get version 1.0 out. I'm sure they can do it. But that 0.63 wants releasing as soon as possible on Experimental to get us all testing, get all that content out, and get on that 1.0 before the end of the year. And everybody goes crazy. Next up, we're moving on to my main lead designer, Peter. Our first working implementation of the new melee combat looked great, especially with predefined combos chained by attacks flying through the air. However, after applying a rule set to it and passing some internal playtests, we have confirmed that it would be really hard to wrap our intentions of melee combat around these predefined combo attacks. As gameplay is the most important thing in DayZ, I don't want to compromise on possibilities. Ideally, players should always be able to choose which attack option at hand they can use. Considering the predefined combo chains were composed of different attack types, players were not able to choose between light and heavy attack types. Since their order was firmly determined, it made melee combat feel like something that's a bit out of your hands, which made it less interesting in the end. We have decided to try one more prototype, in which the player is able to freely choose which attack to perform, a light or a heavy one. Immediately after the first playtest run, it was clear that's the right direction to make the melee combat more controllable. We will continue to iterate and improve the melee so that we finally arrive at the final implementation. It's safe to say that despite the shift from predefined combos, the new melee combat will still maintain visual variety in terms of movement, as there are still attack variations from both the left and the right side, and for both light and heavy attack types. These variants are seamlessly blended together, creating a continuous flow of attacks that simply look nice. Nice. The infected AI that you know well from 0.62 and older versions of DayZ was kind of always limited, and it never met our expectations, nor came close to the behaviours we defined in the design team. Currently, the infected AI is being heavily reworked, incorporating the new animation system. We are cooperating closely with our programming team to achieve all the intended features. 
The primary goal is to make the infected feel better on every level you can imagine. May it be more clever use of sensors to strengthen stealth, luring and aggro, adding search behavior around the last known position of their target, or simply much improved readability of infected AI. Utilizing transitions like lost interest, target confirmed or target lost between their states. There are some significant changes coming to their melee combat as well, with jumping attacks making a comeback. And now let's move on to lead animator, Victor. The entire team is still really busy implementing the remaining parts of our animation system overhaul, so today I would like to at least share with you a couple of fresh gifts from the development. After receiving the implementation of the new ladder climbing from our programmers, we are currently applying some final touches to ladder animations and behavior. We're finally able to enter exit the ladders in a rather smooth way and also climb and even slide down the ladder. There's still some polish and fine tuning to do before we can make the ladders experimental ready, but we're getting there. The team is also busy with weapons, player turn animations and unconscious animations. And finally this week, the man of the hour, map designer Adam. In this status report, I would like to talk about another map feature of the upcoming 0.63 update, Taurus Trails. The Chona Russian Taurus Club, also known short as what the hell does that say, is responsible for the wide network of Taurus Trails in the Republic of Chernarus. In South Zagoria, the province of Chernarus that we have in DayZ, they maintain roughly 200 kilometers of Taurus Trails, from the northern border mountains through the central fields to the important destinations in coastal towns, connecting many of the historic and natural landmarks, but also showing perhaps not often visited places in South Zagoria, all to make your travels easier and safer. And you guys know I need that. I got, I got lost in the last day's stream I did this week. Jesus. Check, check me out on Twitch. Link in the description below. The idea of having the Taurus trails on Chernarus has been floating around since early Armour 2 days. It was brought up again at the start of Daisy development with more details fleshed out. But given the rapid iterations on Chernarus Plus map, it was not really feasible to start with the actual implementation until the map was in a more stable state. With the release of Update 0.62, which introduced a total vegetation overhaul along with the western border rework, we found that the map has finally reached a somewhat stable state that would allow us to finally return to the idea of tourist trails. We have revisited the original plans, made several improvements and redesigned the planned trail network to support all the map changes that have happened over the past couple of years. A result of this task is an overwhelming 200 km long trail network, so what helped us getting there? Four different coloured markings to mark the trails. You will find these on trees, rocks and poles. In real life, you would also find arrow versions of these markings. But to avoid too much duplication in data, we had to design every hard turn of the trail without the arrow markings. 93 Custom Directional Crossroad Signs Tailored for each trail crossroad, any important place, stops and for the start end of each trail. Crossroad signs contain the local name and mark the crossroads elevation above sea level in meters. Individual plates cover every possible direction you can take, along with the travel distance in kilometers to three following crossroads directional trail signs. Same as traffic directional signs and settlement signs, everything on these plates is written in Russian, Cyrillic. Two types of actual path models for the trails. We use these models when the trail goes through the meadows, fields and forests. Roughly 60% of the whole trail network is covered by these models. Because as in real life, trails are also using the existing road network, excluding major roads so tourists are not in danger of a serious car accident. Well, that's probably going to happen in Daisy though, isn't it? Two types of tourist shelters. To make a bigger trail crossroad more interesting and believable. Brand new assets that serve as shelter for players during rainy weather, or just when you want to get a bit of a rest before continuing your journey. In addition to these, we also have one other supporting asset that may or may not make it into 0.63, map stands. In real life, these are present mostly on major trail roads in order to help tourists to get a bigger picture and plan their trip. We've got several prototypes so far, but still ironing out the best shape, size and map coverage. If it will be the entire map or, for example, quarters. There will be a You Are Here sign on the map to help you pinpoint your current location. Personally, I will be exploring these tourist trails myself. Maybe I'll find something I've never noticed before, seen before. Or it's just new and it's just a nice little easter egg or something. You never know. It's worth exploring. And of course, it may stop us getting lost so much in the deep woods. Especially since the new implementation of the foliage tech in 0.62. It's beautiful, but dangerous out there. We also have sound designer Philip mentioning they're going to push the audio side of the engine as far as they possibly can. Not by just using flat 2D ambient sounds, but use as many positional sounds as the engine will allow. And of course, as we know, audio, especially in DayZ, or any game for that matter, is just as important as visuals. 
sometimes more so. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is all for this week's status report for the 13th of February, 2018. As always, don't forget to check out the community spotlight Beatty has put up together with a blood, sweat and tears at the bottom of the status report, link in the description below as always. Make sure to read through the status report in full yourselves in case I missed any information, but usually I don't. Thank you for subscribing. As always, leave a like as it helps the channel out a lot. Leave your comments in the comment section below. Let's discuss this latest status report. What do you think of it? Some nice information there, to be honest, in my opinion. Hopefully not long now from the wording of Experimental 0.63 from Martin. Looking forward to it. Going to hit it hard on Twitch. So don't forget to follow me on Twitch. Come and join the chat. Follow me on Twitter. Come in our Discord. All links are in the description below. Make sure you want to you wanna be there. Because we have huge conversations in DayZ. And I guess a lot of you don't know I actually still stream. And I do. I'm still alive. And on that note, I'll see you peeps next time.